Muslims, since you, nobody's giving me a pushback on why this this could be a bad thing, if a Muslim was here, this is my this is something that they might say against doing stuff like this, right? And I I'll tell you my response to it. Like they say, like guys, the Quran, okay, maybe it's not sacred to you. Maybe you don't hold it as something special, okay? But you know, you know that this is special to us. Yeah. You know that this hurts our feelings, okay? You, right? What would you feel like if somebody came and made a joke, made a cartoon about your mother and made fun of her or like made like showed your mother in like in a sexual way and uh, posted it on the internet? Would you would you like that? Wouldn't that hurt you? Salt and pepper. Wouldn't if if somebody did that to somebody else? Wouldn't you think that they are being sadistic in a way that they're enjoying hurting other people's feelings? What? Why would? Why would you? Why would anybody do something like that? Right? Like unless you get joy out of causing people misery and offending people just to get a reaction out of them, right? Um, but to that Muslim, I say like, yeah, if somebody was just offending you for no reason other than offending you that is a dick move that is a dick move but That's this exactly is not the doing. same thing right your analogy fails here huh? your analogy fails here let me give you let me fix your analogy for you to scenario that would make more sense right let's let's go with the mother example okay let's say that my mother, you were making cartoons about her and making fun of her. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? This is my mom. Are you sadistic? Stop doing that. You, you might be like, okay, yeah, oh, sorry. I didn't know this was bothering you. Okay, I'll stop. But let's say we have... Um, well, let's say we had... Um, but let's say my mom was a politician. Oh, here we okay? go. And my mom was powerful and she was passing laws and passing laws that was affecting people's lives right and you are a comedian or somebody that draws um, you know makes satire or a cartoonist right and you don't like her policies so now you're making cartoon making fun of my mom because she's making policies that that is affecting people and you want to bring attention to it using your comedy or your, um, you know, or whatever else you do, right? Um, in that situation, it actually makes sense, right? It's not just, you're not just making fun of my mom just because, just because you want to offend me. Now let's escalate this. This is actually still not where we are at right now. Let's say your mom saw that you're making jokes about her policies and about her, and she decided that I'm not going to, I'm not going to tolerate this. In her own country, where, where she lives, right? Let's say she's a very powerful politician. Where she lives, she makes it she's trying to make it illegal for people to make fun of her. And in other countries where she doesn't have any authority, she's trying to create an environment where people feel intimidated to make fun of her. In that situation, I would think like, you know what? Now it's not just a good idea to make fun of your mom. Now I consider it a responsibility and my duty to make fun of your mom. Every place at any point that you try to introduce this red line for us, we have to cross it. Every, again, this is my activism. I see baseless red lines and I piss on them. Okay? And you guys should do the same thing. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so here he's contradicting himself. Just a few minutes ago, he said uh, that the Quran is just a paper. It's nothing special. Oh, there. See, this, this, nothing happens. You see, like, nothing happens. Okay, this is just paper. Okay, it's nothing. Okay, nothing happens. Now he's saying that uh, the Quran is has the power to influence uh, people to change laws of Canada. <laughs> I mean, or at least have influence in Canada. So which one is it? I mean. Is it just a book that's nothing special, or is it a dangerous book that can change Canada? Which one is it? Because it can be both. Also, if this was just a random book, why do you feel the need to desecrate it? I mean, the fact that you're desecrating it shows that it's not just some book. Here, he's committing the self-conflicting conditions fallacy. 
he's making an argument uh, that is self-contradictory. The Quran cannot both be just a book that's not special and be a book that's special at the same time. It's a contradiction. Also, a few days ago, on this channel, I shared a research data from Cardiff University, Hitler Project. Uh, in that data, it showed that, that uh, hate speech against religion can lead to real-life violence. The article said, Academics from Cardiff University, Hate Lab Project, collected Twitter and police recorded crime data from London over an eight-month period to analyze whether a significant association existed. Their results uh, show that as the number of hate tweets, uh, those deemed to be antagonistic towards uh, race or ethnicity, and this is important, religion made from one location increased so did the number of racially and religiously aggravated crimes, which included violence, harassment, and criminal damage. So basically what the data, data showed is that uh, increase in online hate speech against religion increases violence in real life against those followers of those religions. Now, so, now last I checked, Armin eating the Quran was the hate speech was an act of hate speech or a, at least a hateful behavior and his tweets where he tweeted his videos of him eating the Quran and spitting on it were hateful especially and this is extremely dangerous because the research according to the research data this can lead to violence and has led to violence in the past based on this let me make an argument premise one hate speech against religion promotes violence against that religious group whether it's done to provoke that reaction or not premise two Armin Nawabi promotes hate speech against religion. Conclusion. Therefore, Armin Nawabi is promoting violence against Muslims, even if that's not his intention. Now, you know, for a long time, ex-Muslims played this card that, oh, I, I, I'm just, I just hate the religion, I don't hate the people. As if, like, there are two separate things. As if there's no connection. However, this research absolutely destroys this myth. It shows that uh, uh, hate speech against religion leads to violence, which is why they can no longer hide <laughs> under the shield of free speech anymore. It's done. <laughs> you know, it's over. Uh, they have to take responsibility for their actions. Now, even if they're not intending to harm the Muslims, it doesn't matter since the re end result is still the same. Based on this, let me make an argument. Premise one. Hate speech leads to unnecessary violence. Premise 2. Islam is against hate speech. Conclusion. Therefore, Islam is against unnecessary violence. Now, you decide for yourself. Which is better? Absolute free speech, which can lead to unnecessary violence, or limited free speech in an Islamic government, which has little chance of leading to unnecessary violence? I mean, even if you're non-Muslim or a utilitarian liberal, this argument is still sound. According to a famous YouTuber or slash philosopher, Natalie Wynn, utilitarianism is the right thing to do is whatever causes the highest ratio of human happiness to human suffering. Utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is a moral theory which says that the right thing to do is whatever causes the highest ratio of human happiness to human suffering. So the utilitarian approach to punishment looks forward and preventing future crimes. Some utilitarian punishment goals might be deterrence, punishing criminals as an incentive for others not to offend, or incapacitation of criminals in prisons, or rehabilitation of criminals, trying to educate or discipline them so that they can re-enter society. So according to Natalie, one of the main purposes of utilitarianism is to deter crime. So it only logically follows that since hate speech against religion is leading to violent crimes, therefore people should not be allowed to use hate speech against religion. So even if you are an utilitarian liberal, this argument is still sound. Again, debate and discussion is one thing, and it should be promoted. However, hate speech or desecrating someone's holy book serves no purpose but brings greater harm to society. Therefore, such things should not be allowed. Even if Army Nawabi does not intend to do this, it doesn't matter because the end result is still bringing harm to society. So, and if Armin, da, if you do claim to be a utilitarian liberal, then you should stop doing this. Again, this is not an Islamic argument, it's a liberal argument. Now, one counter argument could be that, ah, but in the Quran, doesn't Allah SWT also criticize the disbelievers? Isn't that also hate speech? The answer is no, because there's a difference between human beings saying something versus God saying something. 
For example, in the Bible and in the Torah, there's all kinds of things that are offensive to us Muslims. However, Islam still allows them to practice their religion. While in the Quran, Allah does criticize different uh, ideas and people, he also says to his worshippers not to insult or belittle any of these people. As Muslims, we have to follow his command and respect uh, other people's religion and do not uh, and not use hate speech. Allah says, do not curse those they invoke besides Allah, lest they insult Allah in hostility without knowledge. You can read about this in Surah Al-Anam uh, 6.108. However, if Armin uses hate speech, then tells his followers not to attack Muslims, then his followers has no reason to obey him. Uh, and hateful people uh, will probably use him as an excuse. For example, I mean, uh, the famous incident of the Christchurch Christ Church massacre, where the shooter uh, to, uh, said, <clears throat> said that he was inspired by Candace Owens. He was still inspired by her, by her rhetoric, by her hate, by her hate speech. Regardless, let's continue. But if something, something that is hurting somebody, and they can't avoid it in any way, and what I'm doing is not helping in any way, like this is multiple conditions, like this is three conditions, right? And somebody asks me, like, can you stop? This is hurting me. I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't want to hurt you for no, apparent, for no reason. I don't get joy out of seeing you offended. But in this scenario, right, you being offended is an unfortunate byproduct, and that harm is way, 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 way less significant than the harm that will be introduced to societies that we live in if we let you guys draw red lines around things that we, the ways that we get to express ourselves. Because you, a lot of people are like, well, fine, express yourself. Why do you have to express yourself like this? Because you said we shouldn't. Okay? And because some of you say we can't. Because these red lines will turn into walls if we don't piss on them. Is this guy for real? <laughs> like, is he seriously saying that if you don't eat the Quran, Canada is going to turn into an Islamic state? <laughs> uh, this is both an insult to the Muslim and the ex-Muslim community. Like, I mean, seriously? Anyway, here he's committing the slippery slope fallacy. Just because people are being offended and are telling you not to do something does not mean that they're trying to take over Canada. <laughs> Or bring Sharia law. The way he frames it is as if, like, uh, you know, oh, look at these Muslims, they're trying to bring Sharia law on, their, on our country. Uh, they're going to first, but basically, his argument is something like this, right? You know, these Muslims, they're going to first tell us not to desecrate the Quran. Then they're going to pass laws and bring Sharia law to Canada. Then they will pass apostasy law and kill us all. <laughs> This is truly pathetic. This is nothing but fear mongering. These things don't logically follow. I mean, people are, are simply telling you not to do some, not to do this or not to burn the Quran because it hurts their feelings. That's it. There's no hidden agenda here. Muslims aren't trying to take over the world or take over Canada. I mean, Muslims are a tiny minority in Canada. So this is absurd. Regardless, let's continue. Uh, okay, so Armin Ababi, who delights in saying provocative things, presum uh, presumably to get a raise out of everyone, is to, uh, no, no, God damn it, it's the exact opposite. We're doing this so that it's basically the same as is the same as uh, the Joy Muhammad Day annual event. So that we, we we're doing this so that we eventually get to a place where we get the raise out of no, no one, right? If you actually notice what I do on Twitter, when you, when I post something like this and I highlight the comments of people that say, you know what, I don't care, right? When Muslims say like, you know what, this is insulting, but I'm not gonna, I don't like it, but I'm not gonna, you know, I support your right to do it. I highlight those. I I quote tweet those, right? Or when Hindus come and say like. Oh, even when they do it, but insulting me, right? Like they say, guys, guys, this Armin is like an attention-seeking guy. He's obviously he's like idiot, and obviously he's doing this for the clout and money. But we shouldn't pay attention to him. Let him be do whatever. Like our religion is strong. Like Muslims and uh, Hindus say, our religion is strong anyway. Islam is not gonna get hurt by this, or Hindus are not gonna get hurt by this. Let him be. I even highlight those, even the ones that are directly attacking me, right? And like, yes, great. This is the response that I want. So when he says like he pre pre assumes that presumably to get rise out of everyone, no, Hamid, it's exact opposite. And guess what? It's working. It's working, guys. When I play this video, if I did this ten years ago. If I did this 10 years ago, I would be in hiding right now. I would be in hiding right now. Do you know why I did this and I'm not in hiding right now? Because it's working. It's working. By the way, here, Armin is reacting to an article written by the popular atheist Heman Mehta. Uh, Heman Mehta, who was also an atheist, did not like the fact that Armin desecrated the Quran. Unlike Armin, he has decency. So he called him out. And Armin lost his shit. Here, he's contradicting himself. He's saying that uh, he's doing this so that he doesn't get a raise out of Muslims. So that Muslims are desensitized, this is the word he uses. However, in another video, he says he's doing things like burning the Quran and all that because he does want to get a raise out of Muslims. Because he wants the attention of Muslims, because he wants to have a dialogue so that he can talk to them or debate them. First of all, if you think that I'm not going to reach more Muslims, you're so wrong. I didn't even, after I burned the Quran, 
And after I did those other things, I didn't even have to worry about reaching Muslims. Muslims were coming to me. Okay? So my exposure to Muslims grew a thousand times because of those things. But because of those things. So you're wrong about that. But if uh, Patata is saying, I don't mean changing their minds. I mean, you have anything to say with regards to anything they won't listen because they will only see you as the guy that burns and eats the Quran. That's not true. And my Muslim audience grew because of those things. I before like I was trying to debate Muslims before those things happened. I was having a really hard time finding anybody to talk to me. After I do, did those things, I had so okay. For, to be fair, most of the messages I was getting were death threats and swear words and rape rape threats. But there was also a whole bunch of messages of people like, hey, brother, do you want me to actually talk to you about this real Islam and teach you? Like, oh, sorry about all these other Muslims that are sending you death threats. I'm not one of those. those these people do not represent Islam. Please, if you have time, I could talk to you. I could teach you a little bit about Islam. I was like, wow, I actually have more Muslims to talk to that I even have time for. So it's actually the, the exact opposite of what you're saying, Patata. So which one is it, Armin? I mean, are you disagreeing the Quran to make sure that Muslims get desensitized and just doesn't care about it? Or are you doing it to get a raise out of Muslims so they get angry and so that you can have a conversation with them? Because it can't be both. <laughs> so which one is it? You know what? Let's steal man his position. Let's say he does want Muslims to be desensitized to burning the Quran. Uh, to be desensitized. Let's put this, put this argument in a logical form. Premise one. Armin desecrates holy books to desensitize religious people. Premise two, desensitizing religious people leads to more tolerance of blasphemy. Premise three, blasphemy leads to more tolerance of atheism. Conclusion, therefore desecrating holy books leads to more tolerance of atheism. Now, this shows the true color of this wannabe white liberal. He is making the exact same argument some, some slave masters made. <laughs> when slavery was still a thing in America. You know, there's a very famous speech by Malcolm X, Brother Malcolm X, where he talks about house slave versus field slaves. Here, take a look. Back during slavery, when black people like me talked to the slave, they didn't kill him. They sent some old house negro along behind him to undo what he said. You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. And the house Negro always looked out for his master. When the field Negroes got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. The house Negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes, and he could talk just like his master, master, good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss, we sick? When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught a fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. This was the difference between the two. And today you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. Yeah. I'm a field Negro. Now, obviously, I cannot use the N-word. Uh, however, I will use the word slaves instead of the N-word. You see, Armin wants Muslims to be the house slave. You know, he's going to insult your religion, mock your gods and your prophets. But don't you dare raise your voice against him. Or he's going to punish you by insulting and mocking your religion some more. However, if you become a good little, uh, good little house slave, 
you're okay, right? I mean, he's not gonna insult your uh, religion. If you just, if you just obey the liberal standards, right? If you just uh, become a good little house slave, he's gonna be nice to you. He's gonna highlight your comments, right? How generous, right? So if you are one of those Muslims who are going to say, who are going to him saying that, ah, brother, you know, don't mind these other Muslims, you know, uh, don't listen to these other mean Muslims. Uh, you have the right to do this, the right to insult the Prophet. You know, uh, let me teach you real Islam, etc., etc. Well, good job, good job, Muslims. You have become a house slave, just like Malcolm X said. However, if you're like me and you hate apostates, these vile, disgusting creatures who are insulting our religion, desecrating our holy book, mocking us, insulting our prophet, mocking our figures, then he has the boss to tell us that we need to be okay with that, that we need to give up our religious freedom, then join, then join me and tell him to shove his generosity up his ass. Again, sorry to use that language. If the Western society is going to treat us, treat Muslims like slaves, anyway, then I would rather be a field slave, like Brother Malcolm X said, than a house slave. I mean, and it's now up to you, Muslims in the West, if you live in the West, to decide which one you're going to be. Are you going to be a, a house slave, obeying their little uh, commands, or are you going to be a field slave and fighting for what's right, fighting for your religious freedom? I'll let you decide. Regardless, let's continue.